Bob's historical decorum. TV wrecked social, wrecked TV wrecked socialism. TV wrecked socialism. We're now in the post TV age. You're free. Art. You're free. Art. Of course, that means everybody else is free to run amok over you. So you got to be rather paranoid. was the last hangover of the bureaucratic phase, the communist state, and the Berlin Wall. So the fax machine was the uh, stimulator of a political revolution in the sense that the uh, Eastern European gang is screaming for democracy, which is a bureaucratic setup, all right? And they saw, from the effect of the fax machines, the image of the end of bureaucracy, yet their solution is another bureaucracy, but a participatory bureaucracy called democracy. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we could say anything. Dogma changes every 15 seconds here, right? Bob, is that top down or bottom up? Oh, yeah. 
Hi, I'm Dave Panning from Biggie Duff, Rawls Cross, and the Irish Descendants, and you're listening to Schmur, I call it, CHMR 93.5. Welcome to the International Connection. This is the electrified voice of Bob Marshall. Today we feature an interesting pattern from May Brussels. First, under the category of the biography with missing facts, May points out the parallels in the careers of three actors, Evita Perron, Ronald Reagan, and Pope John Paul II, especially in the years during and just after the Second World War. According to a book on Evita by Paul Montgomery, she was the, quote, creation of fascism that spread, of the totalitarian infection that spread from Germany and Italy in the 1930s, unquote. Before her husband Juan Perón became president of Argentina, he was that country's ambassador to Rome. Evita then ruled Argentina with her husband from 1945 to 1952. During that period, having risen from poverty herself, she played the dual role of helping the poor and the labor union, while privately accumulating great wealth with the help of Nazi advisors from Germany, including Martin Bormann, whom it is alleged she smuggled into Argentina. When she died in 1952, she left huge sums in many accounts in Switzerland, which money, according to May Brussels, was released gradually by her Nazi confreres to build up the post-war Nazi international around Otto Skorzeny until 1973, when $800 million in Evita's Swiss accounts was liquidated, which caused wild swings on the international gold market. Furthermore, a new book published in 1984 by Paul Hoffman reveal more details about the Vatican's connections to spy money, the CIA, Nixon, and the Nazis in a project codenamed Operation Eva. And May Brothel points out that Eva was another name that Evita Perron was known by as she pushed her homeland, a country that was much like the United States in the 1920s, into the arms of the Fourth Reich. Meanwhile, another actor who did not suffer during the war was Pope John Paul II. As Carol Wartila, he was a worker in the Salve chemical plant near Auschwitz during the Nazi occupation of Poland. And because he had a job and official work, he was protected from roundups and even permitted to walk through the city after curfew. According to the book The Pope from Poland by Mr. Karolak, on the day before the major Gestapo raid on the quarry owned by Solvay, Karol Wojtyla was transferred to the factory, which probably saved his life. During the German op- occupation from 1942 to 1945, Carol was able to start up and perform in the theater, attended only by Germans, and at a time when any other theater activity was illegal. After the war, he goes to Rome and becomes the protege of Pope Paul VI, who as Secretary of State for the Vatican, helped organize the Rat Line to enable Nazis to escape from Europe to South America. His understudy, Pope John Paul II, then enters the world stage in the 1980s as a man loving peace, a champion of the poor, and obviously warm in front of the public, like Evita Perron and Ronald Reagan, but never forgetting his hidden past connections to the Nazis, as is shown by his appointment of his former employer, the man who ran I.G. Farben and Hitler's major bank during the Second World War, Herman Ads, to be in charge of the Vatican Bank in 1982. In spite of protests by Jews over this appointment, Herman Ads is still in charge today. Another great actor of our time, Ronald Reagan, also performed suspicious activities during World War II. According to the book, Where's the Rest of Me? by Reagan and Richard Hubler, Reagan collaborated with the OSS, who had obtained plans for the Nazi rocket launchers at Pinamunda and the U.S. Army, who built an exact replica of Pinamunda in Florida and then bombed it while Reagan's group filmed it. This fact leads May Brussels to ask, what were those films for if they subsequently bombed the real Pinamunda and could have filmed that? However, to continue, after the war, Reagan left the Defense Department as a captain and became absorbed in anti-communist activities in association with J. Edgar Hoover, Senator Joseph McCarthy, and Richard Nixon. But according to a book by Donald Fries called The Secret Life of Ronald Reagan, he kept these connections secret and joined the left-leaning anti-fascist Screen Actors Guild as a cover while working with the right. This act was identical with the V de Perron's image during the same years, ostensibly helping the poor in the Union, but really strengthening their Nazi ties, such as Reagan being on the board of Young Americans for Freedom and organizing Democrats for Nixon in 1960. So, to tie the three careers together, to illustrate how they played roles to suck the masses in, and that their public policies are not conservative but fascist, May Brussels points to Reagan's new relationship with the Vatican. President Reagan has established diplomatic recognition of Pope John Paul II's church for the first time in over a century with the appointment of Archbishop Pio Laghi as the Vatican's ambassador to the United States. Pio Laghi, having formerly been ambassador to Argentina during the period when its military junta murdered thousands of dissidents. This junta was propped up by Nazis and their billions of dollars 
originally released from Avita Peron's Swiss bank account, whose coffers were filled during her husband's regime, he having been ambassador to Rome, with strong connections to a church, who helped the Nazis escape to Argentina, and whose own bank is now run by Hitler's former banker. Therefore, any listener to the international connection should be able to understand the meaning of the story headline that ran in the Toronto Star on April 12th, quote, Reagan will honor Nazis on May tour, unquote. Now we'll hear from Sherman Skolnick and the Citizens Committee to clean up the court in Chicago. Hi, Sherman Skolnick bringing you news. Killed by the Monopoly Press. Presented 24 hours a day by the Citizens Committee to clean up the court. 9,800 South Oglesby. Oh boy, that is too happy. So, uh, Bob Marsh, if you're listening, Mike has this to say for you. Okay, I'm back. It was, really good. Station managers may come and go. But they will always be Bob. <laughs> okay, Bobby. So um, hope that's what. Hope you're listening tonight, Bob. Yeah. So, Bobby Marshall, we uh, hope you get another reward, an award or something, mm-hmm. so that you can maybe uh, change your image, change your approach to life. You just don't seem to have a handle on uh, the new etiquette required in the nineties. We'll continue after this. So yeah, that was the international connection. So yeah. It's a rather interesting CD so far. Not really a lot to the CD. This is Fabio Mark Chironi. You are listening to the <laughs> second half of Kane Booper Swank on 93.5 CHMRFM. Another electric peep show. I love those. On 93.5 CHMRFM. <laughs> Spot, which is the layering information on top of information. So what is that? 